Truck drivers. What's a creepy story you've got from the middle of nowhere? Part 6. Unwind and enjoy. If you like what you see, hit subscribe and let your friends know about Thread Tonic. Count 1. Not a truck driver, but still a traveling in the middle of nowhere story. Many years ago, we were driving back to Southern California from a cabin stay in Northern California. These was a huge car accident on the freeway that was adding four hours to our drive. This was when tom-toms were at their peak and started to come standard with traffic avoiding redirections. Anyways, the tom-tom chimes up as the sun's going down and says it can save us three hours if we get off the freeway. Then it proceeds to lead us through the moonless night on rural roads surrounded by cornfields. I turn to my wife and say, I've seen this movie before, keep your eyes open. A few minutes later, there's a van on the side of the road with its hazard lights on, and normally I would stop and help, but no way. Not tonight, Satan. And for the next hour of driving, having no idea what was around us or where we were, it was one thing after another. Broken down cars with hazards on, having semis on either side of us making us hold our breath that they don't force us to stop. Too many of every horror film trope for a simple one-hour detour. Count two. My dad was a truck driver and I came along on short trips on weekends and the one day we're cruising along and we hear a helicopter. A minute later, there's an air convoy just flying above us about 400 feet up. But it wasn't just like two or three helicopters, it was like 30 or 40. I was really young, so military helicopters were really cool. Account three. Not a truck driver. However, I do have a somewhat creepy story. My friends and I were taking a road trip from Arizona to California. We decided we wanted to go before the sunrise, and we left about midnight. We were about three hours in, but my car needed gas, and the girls and I wanted to stop to toke up. We had a considerable amount of weed in the car, and we wanted to get rid of all of it before our drive back. So we start to roll a joint in this poorly lit gas station. We were just about to take a hit when this guy comes running up to my car and starts to pound on the driver's side window. I rolled it down just enough to talk to him, but not enough for him to force entry into my car. He seemed scared and shaken up, but something didn't seem right. He was sweaty, and I could tell he was looking inside my car for something. At first, I thought he was an undercover cop, and my heart was racing. However, he said he had some car trouble and asked if we would take a look at it. At this point, it was 3.00 a.m. I had all my doors locked and had not gotten gas yet. I knew nothing of cars, and neither did any of the ladies in the car. We told him this. I told him I could call a tow for him, although he persisted on using my phone. The other girls were freaking out, and of course I was too. I could see a payphone by the vending machine at the gas station and told him I would slip him a few quarters through the crack in my window so he could call whoever he would like. Out of nowhere, his tone changed. He got really calm and looked me dead in the eye. He told me to unlock the door. My eyes darted towards the direction of his car, and we could see two other males pacing while one male was sitting in the driver's seat. I noped the fuck right out of there, told him to go fuck himself, rolled up the window and hopped right back on the highway. I know for a fact, if we had gotten out of that car, we would have never been seen again. I called the police to report him and asked to be notified if there was an arrest made. I never heard back. Arizona is number one for sex trafficking. Be safe out there, ladies and gentlemen. Count four. Okay, here goes. While in high school, I used to hang out every Friday night a couple towns away with two friends. This was upstate NY in the mid-90s. The drive home was about 45 minutes up and through the mountains. There was one patch of road that had no houses or street lights for about 5 to 10 minutes straight and always freaked me out a little seeing how dark it was. One night while I was driving this patch of road, my very worst fear occurred. The headlights from my car started to dim. Then I noticed not only the rest of the lights in the car dashboard starting to dim, but the entire car seemed to be running out of energy altogether. Before I knew it, the car started stalling and I had to pull over. I remember yelling, no, no, please, no, fuck! I was freaking the fuck out because this is how every alien abduction tale begins. When I finally stopped, it was pitch black. There was no light whatsoever except from the glare of the moon. I may not have been more scared in all my life. I gave it less than a minute and I just kept trying to turn the car back on by twisting the key. It worked like a charm, and the car fully came back on and I was able to get the hell out of there. Never found out why it happened to begin with. Story 2. Yet another Friday along the same patch of lightless road. 
This time, as I was driving, I looked up into the sky to my right and saw something large but very far away, falling out of the sky completely engulfed in fire. I've never seen anything like it, and especially the trail of fire. It was a literal fireball. I watched as it passed the mountains and disappeared. It being after midnight and desolate out, I imagined I must have just seen a UFO crash. The next day I learned that pieces of the Russian space station were said to be falling to Earth after it lost orbit and it was abandoned. Account 5. I'm not necessarily a trucker, but I'm a commercial delivery driver in a rural area in Midwest U.S. Randomly one day as I'm leaving our home store, the radio just stopped working in the store. We thought nothing of it and I left to start the day and they just turned off the radio in the store and continued their day. I start the car and boom, radio not working. But it wasn't working on every single station. So I thought that was weird and decided to go back in the store and ask them to see if it was that way on their radio. Same thing. I go out to my personal car, no radio. I call my fiancé and best friend who are on the complete opposite side of the county where it's not rural, no radio. Call my mom, nothing on her end. Everyone I worked with called surrounding stores and customers and they had nothing. It was this weird blackout, so I finally ended up leaving for the day's deliveries. I left the radio on in the background even though it was static, just for some sort of noise. The volume was really low, but out of nowhere a faint talking can be heard and it was going in and out. It was a language I did not recognize at all, and I honestly don't even know what to compare it to. And it sounded like a female computerized voice. Oddly though, my store's radio caught it as well, as they later told me they heard it too. After that, it was static again for a few hours. Then slowly, one by one, stations came back up. Now, this is so easy to probably have an explanation to, but the weirdest thing about it was that there was no media attention to it, and no radio station mentioned anything about the hours-long blackout. It was like it never happened. What freaks me out about this was the complete silence about it and how no one was given an explanation. Account 6. I don't remember the town, other than it was near Oklahoma-Kansas border. But we pulled into this town, and the place was deserted. Most of the buildings and homes looked like they were less than 20 years old, including schools. It's still one of the creepiest things I had ever seen. Later learned the town was host to a lead mine that structurally undermined the town. The truck was under the posted weight limit, and the water supply was contaminated, which is the reason it was deserted, but still creepy. Account 7. Not a truck driver. But I worked for a catering company once, and they had me drive the truck one morning at like 4.30 to deliver a shit ton of breakfast to some tech facility with engineers who do military contract stuff. Not a huge truck, but still a truck I had no business driving. The assholes didn't fill in the tank, so I had to pull over to get gas. I was the only person at the gas station, and this older white Cadillac with tinted windows pulled up. This older gentleman in a nice suite jumped out and came running at me and started screaming in a thick possible Trinidadian or Guyanese accent, Excuse me, sir, excuse me. I have a quick question to ask. I said, Sure, what's up? He replied, do you know where the dead people are? In God All Bug-Eyed, AMD said, I don't know, I don't know any dead people. He replied, heaven, hell, reincarnated? If you are unsure, you need to learn about Jehovah and his glory, brother. He then handed me a religious pamphlet that said, what to do when a loved one die, that shows a photo of a hysterical crying woman holding her hysterical crying son. He then said, read this to learn about death then walked back to his car. I sat there and thought, damn, that's a nice car and nice suit. Threw the pamphlet away and got a swisher suite at the store, then left to go to deliver the food to the catering place. Count eight. Not a truck driver myself, but I like to accompany my stepfather from time to time. This one time, we were on this curvy road of just trees, not a house, not even fences on the land behind the trees. As the hours pass, I start seeing a man white rubber boots, which were dirty, a vertically striped light blue button shirt, a blue cap, a cloth bag hanged from his right shoulder, and a long-ass machete hanging from his dusty jeans. I don't know why I remember him so clearly. For some reason, as we got closer and closer, he was just the same distance, I said, hey, we should offer him a ride. It's an empty road far from any town. My stepdad looks over and says, who? There's no one other than you and me. 
I said, there is, look over there in front, the man with the light blue shirt. This kept on for a few minutes back and forth until the man just disappeared, I said to myself, oh good, probably just my imagination. Until blood spots start appearing on the road, I decided not to tell my stepdad because I thought it probably was just an animal which got hurt, or my imagination playing with my boredom, but it never ended. And what made it worse is that when I asked to stop for a second to take a piss, the man appeared again. Only difference was, it was on the opposite direction. I said to myself, oh fuck's sake, not you again. I decided to not pay any attention to it and just carry on with my business. When I finished, the man was running towards me and kept getting closer and closer. I got scared and jumped hastily back inside the truck and told him to start moving because the man was coming. He laughed and told me I was crazy and that there's nobody. The blood stopped a few kilometers away and it never came to my mind after that until my mom told me about seeing the same man and the same blood trail on a similar road. It might not be as scary as some others in the post, but it really messes with your brain. Account 9. A friend of mine's husband is an OTR driver. He told me a story last year. In California, he decided to stop for the night in this diner parking lot. Wasn't much else around, but he thought a hot coffee would feel wonderful. So he hops off the truck, walks in. He's greeted by a beautiful lady named Jackie. She welcomes him, sits him down, and asks if he'd like some pancakes and coffee. He tells her he isn't hungry. She frowns and brings back some coffee and homemade pie. Tells him he needs to eat it. It's the most delicious thing he's ever tasted. Jackie sits down with him and talks for an hour. He realizes she's a special lady. An Elvis song comes on and he asks her to dance. After a couple of slow dances, she hands him a rose. He thanks her and she asks him to come back in before he leaves for a hot breakfast. He nods and heads out to his sleeper. Wakes up to pounding on the window. Sheriff is outside and asks him if he's doing all right. He says, yes, sir. They get to talking a little, and he tells the sheriff that he's leaving soon after he goes in to say his goodbyes to Jackie. Explains a little about how he really liked her. The sheriff stares at him bewildered and says, Jackie died three years ago. He motions to the diner that is run down and completely abandoned. Driver opens his truck and pulls out the rose he had left on the passenger seat. Sheriff takes a step back and tells him Jackie was known for putting fresh-cut roses on the tables. Apparently, three men broke into the diner late one night and murdered Jackie during a robbery. Driver had no idea about any of this. Account 10. Okay, so fuck New Jersey. Just kidding, mostly. So, I'm from Canada, and years ago I drove truck long haul for 5.5 years. Five years too long, I always say. Just wasn't for me. So after doing all the western continent driving, I decided to switch to the eastern group to get shorter runs. One night, I'm delivering a load of Nutella Tic Tacs and Ferrero Rocher to a warehouse in New Jersey. Can't remember the name of the town. I'm cruising along I-80 and just running out of steam. Normally, I would park at the delivery and sleep, then deliver, but I just couldn't do it that night. So I get into the last rest area before I have to get off the interstate and roll in. Now, there are some strange rest areas out there, and this is one of them that had parallel parking for trucks. It's actually not that hard, but it's odd to me. So there is one spot, and there's a car sitting in it. Luckily, dude seems nice and backs out of the spot. I think, fuck yeah, thanks, bro, and parallel park a big truck like I've been doing it since diapers. I got a piss, so I start putting my shoes on and get ready to hop out when the dude gets out of his car, walks up to the rear corner of the trailer in front of me, and just stares into my cab. Weird, but okay. I'll wait it out and do my logbook. He walks to the back of my truck and stands there. I lock the doors. Ain't about to be stabbed tonight. He then walks back up to the trailer and stares into the truck again. Well, I grab my phone and dial 911 like a teenage girl walking home alone at 2 a.m., thumb hovering over the send button. I also grabbed my hammer that I use for checking tires or beating potential murderers, just in case. He walks back to his car and gets in but doesn't leave. Fuck this shit! I am wide awake now, and I've forgotten that I've got an American-sized large coffee in my bladder, so I fire the rig up and take off like I'm late for my own wedding and get to my delivery an hour later. Like nothing, absolutely nothing happened, but it is still the creepiest thing I've ever experienced. Count 11. Hey, truck drivers. One of your kind forced me off the road in the middle of the night on I-5, in the middle of nowhere between SF and LA. Anyone who's made this drive 
can attest to the vast emptiness of the long stretch of farmland that surrounds I-5 between Stockton, Vernalis, and Los Angeles, and how empty the road would be past midnight two-lane highway, middle of night. Nobody on the road for hours but myself. I'm driving in the right lane and eventually a semi with an open flatbed carrying a load of enormous industrial piping appears ahead of me. Speed limit on this stretch was 65 mepper for trucks, 75 or 80 mepper for passenger vehicles. I signal, get in the left lane and pass the truck. I get some distance on him, but I stay in the left lane because I don't want the trucker to think I've cut him off. Also, it's the middle of the night and the road is otherwise completely empty, so why not just stay in the left lane till the truck disappears behind me? After a minute or so, I check my mirrors and see that I'm no longer gaining any ground on the truck. I'm maintaining a speed of about 80 mamaramba, so he clearly started accelerating after I passed him. Well, he kept accelerating and gaining ground on me. Must have been going 100 plus miles per hour. And as soon as the cab of his truck was parallel with the front of my car, he started drifting into my lane without signaling. There wasn't a full-sized shoulder on the left side, so I was run completely off the road and into a dirt field. I near drove right into a giant wooden electric line pole and I would have been killed if I hadn't reacted as fast as I did. Thankfully, my Jeep was able to handle it and I was able to continue my journey after watching the trucker speed off at 100 plus miles per hour. Again, no other cars or trucks on the road. No logical reason that I can fathom for his behavior. So truckers, why did this guy decide to run me off the road and nearly kill me? Account 12. I was on an on-ramp on 55 in Mississippi taking a 30 and resting my eyes at about 0230 or so. My eyes lit up like a light was shining in them and I didn't pay much attention until I realized that someone would have to be pointed in the wrong direction to bright light me. I opened my eyes and nothing was in front of me, but the woods to my right were lit up in a near blinding white light. I couldn't see a source because the trees weren't casting shadows. I don't know if the truck was actually shaking or I was just scared. I punched the brakes and jammed it into gear and left. I was 20 minutes late because I had to stop and take another break, but I told dispatch a trooper told me I had to move off the ramp or something like that. It's really the only thing I've seen that's unexplainable except for a random guy on US 79 in Tennessee pulling a wheeled suitcase down the shoulder at the same time for four nights in a row. Account 13. I got stuck in between two remote towns in the middle of the mountains at night during winter. This was in northern BC in Canada. It was about 10 p.m. at night and I couldn't make it up a hill in the snow. No cell phone reception and I am out on the side of the road in pitch black using my cell phone as a light while I put the chains on. Got them on and still couldn't get up the hill. Waited for a snow plow to drive by and followed him up the hill and still couldn't make it. Finally, I had to give up and drive back into the town I had passed about 45 minutes back behind me and stay in a hotel. It felt creepy AF putting those chains on in the snow and pitch black. I was so angry at my dispatch for even forcing me to make it back when they did as I knew it would be tough in the snow. Things could have been so much worse than they ended up being. Account 14. Okay, so I was at one point a truck driver, but this didn't happen to me or to someone driving a truck, but it did happen at night on the road. So my friend was in a car with his three friends driving out on Long Island somewhere. They had been out at a bar or something until it closed and were heading home. The driver notices they are being followed by another car. Everyone is like, nah, you're crazy. He pulls off at the next exit. The car follows. He proceeds right back onto the highway, parkway, expressway, whatever, and the other car still follows. Okay, now everyone is losing their shit. It's not a cop car, and it looks like there are four guys in that car too. For whatever reason, my friends have one of those 30,000 candle power flashlights, so they decide to light these guys up. They aim out the back window and switch it on. In the car behind them are four dudes with Jason Voorhees hockey masks on. My friends scream. The now blinded hockey mask dudes scream and pull over. My friends got away. Account 15. I am currently a truck driver, and this happened maybe a year or so ago. It was nothing paranormal. Just a bad case of sleep paralysis, but it really left me shook that night. I was on my way to Arizona on the I-10 and had just ran out of drive time, so I stopped at a truck stop on the Cali AZ border in Blythe, CA. I parked my truck in a parking spot right under a street lamp and went into the sleeper, closed my curtains and watched some videos on my phone before I went to sleep. Next thing I know, I awake and everything seems normal. 
I could even see a little streak of light coming through the curtains. But I then hear someone jingling their keys and use them to open up my truck. I even felt the person sit in the driver's seat, and I could hear the air releasing from the chair from the weight. I became confused and alarmed and tried to get up to see what's going on, but my body won't move. I tried to yell out to the person, but I can't say anything either. I then hear this person turn on the truck and can even hear the crackling of the radio and the weird voice of the weather channel that my truck always defaults to when turned on. The scary part that made me panic, though, is I started to feel the truck move. I felt the truck move forward and the long arch a truck would normally take to clear the trucks parked around it. At this point, I started struggling, trying to move and trying to say something, but I still can't move or talk. I'm panicking, and then all of a sudden I get control of my body and I jump up and rip the curtains open, and to my surprise, no one is there. I am still parked in the same parking spot, my truck is still locked, and everything is turned off. I tried to tell myself maybe it was the truck next to me, but I look outside and the same trucks are parked around me. I then come to the conclusion that it was most likely sleep paralysis. This wasn't the first or last time I get sleep paralysis, but this was the most vivid one I have ever had. Also made worse by the fact I was by myself in a truck in the middle of nowhere. There were so many details that made me think it was real. It's fascinating how the mind recreates every small detail that I would normally glance over. Sorry if the story isn't too clear. Writing isn't my strong suit.